all right so this is the circuit that we will be using i'll try to explain it as simply as possible so this is the choke coil here the mosfet or igbt here and the shunt capacitors this one multi mini capacitors and the inductor coil 3.5 micro henry here i'm using the litz wire and the capacitor bank 28 microfarad here and i'm using this gate driver the circuit is here i'm using 3 nanofarad 68 nanofarad and 10 microfarad capacitors i'm using uh, ix dn609 pi all right so all right so first we'll look, take a look at the choke coil so you would think do you really need a choke coil yes you do as here you can see this is the current through the choke coil if you use less value i'm using 360 micro henrys your current through the choke coil will uh, go like this if it's uh, smaller than that it's gonna look more like this if it's larger than that it's gonna be like this so so what's the benefit of using a larger choke coil as you can see here's the a little bit of ripple this is the ripple of the choke coil the current through the choke coil and this rlc circuit is also going to try to change the voltage uh, of the power supply so it's going to create some ripples on it so if your choke coil is larger it's going to smooth out that ripple more and if it's smaller it's going to look uh, more choppy like like ripples so moving on to the mosfet or igbt for low frequency i'm using around 20 to 40 kilohertz uh, IGBTs are preferred because uh, they can push a lot of power at uh, low frequencies. MOSFETs are generally we use it for higher frequency circuits. For RLC circuit for our RLC components, uh, I'm using 3.5 micro Henry and 28 microfarads. I made a program in Python to calculate all the values uh, related to RLC circuit. So for these values, 3.5 micro Henry and 28 micro Farad capacitors, as you can see, uh, the resonant frequency comes out around to 16 kilohertz, uh, around here. But adding this shunt capacitor is gonna change that frequency. It's gonna we are gonna have to use a little bit higher frequency we're gonna see that uh, later on so you might ask uh, do we really need shunt capacitor yes we do need a shunt capacitor in this uh, circuit so what shunt capacitor is gonna do is smooth out all the ripples here and it's also gonna provide power to this rlc circuit and it's gonna create a slight delay in the when the uh, mosfet or igbt is going to switch which is going to help us achieve zero voltage switching so it's uh, this shunt capacitor is really important here and it's very important to drive your mosfet or igbt as hard as possible so i'm using this uh, gate driver ic like i mentioned before the 5 ohm resistor here so the more time your IGBT or MOSFET is going to take from 0 to go to 18 volts. I'm using 18 volts uh, for this uh, IGBT uh, because that's uh, uh, 15 is minimum for this one. But uh, I'm driving it a little harder so it switches uh, as soon as possible. So the more time it takes to go from 0 to 15 or 18 volts. Uh, the the it's gonna there are gonna be some conduction losses in the your IGBT so you have to switch it as fast as possible 
to keep those losses low and keep the zero voltage switching as you can see this is a series rlc circuit so the benefit of using a series rlc circuit is that uh, when it reaches its uh, resonant frequency this gonna uh, so the shunt capacitor is obviously going to change that it uh, the re the impedance becomes uh, zero almost zero and a lot of current can pass through it which is going to create stronger magnetic field in this uh, work coil as you can see here i'll also put this program in uh, in the description and you can download it. it's python and you have to download the python program and install it and run some scripts i'll mention all of that in the description as you can see here this is the current curve it's the current is up to 50 amps but in reality it's gonna be uh, less than that these are just uh, almost ideal conditions but uh, it gives you the ballpark idea of uh, what your working frequency is going to be and it gives you a lot of details like uh, what's the voltage drop uh, going to be on resistor inductor uh, capacitor so uh, you can also select series circuit or parallel circuit turn off these uh, uh, curves here so this is the inductive uh, reactance line this one is the capacitive one and uh, this one here is the impedance uh, curve this one this one is the current one the impedance gets uh, the lowest at the this resonant frequency also i wanted to mention is that as you can see it takes some time for the current to settle almost uh, um, I would say after five, five, zero point five milliseconds, it uh, comes around here, and this is at uh, one millisecond. So now we're gonna move on to oscilloscope. So another thing I wanted to mention before we go on to oscilloscope is that uh, that for choke coil, what value you? you you have to use so try to use at large as as large as possible so uh, maybe use uh, something around one milli henry or whatever you have the components laying around so i had 10 of those uh, toroid inductors i 3d printed the shell and stacked on top of each other so it increases the area and just used a single wire because if you put them in series to in increase the inductance, there's going to be resistance of wire also. So if doing this, you can keep the wire length to minimum while uh, getting almost the same amount of inductance. And uh, for the shunt capacitors, uh, you have to figure this value out by yourself so by trial and error for me it works anywhere from 2 microfarads to 3.3 microfarads if your frequency resonant frequency is higher then you're going to have to use a lesser value so if start from suppose 400 nanofarads or maybe even 100 nanofarads all right for showing you on the oscilloscope i'm going to be using three volts from my power supply I'm just gonna turn it on now so the yellow signal that you see is the gate of your MOSFET or IGBT and the pink signal is your collector of your IGBT or drain of your MOSFET if you see a huge spike here make sure that you soldered this uh, shunt capacitor MMC to your drain and source do it as close as possible like as close as you can get if your waveform looks like this like it's flat out here then your frequency is too high if your waveform looks like this then your frequency is too low I'll show you an easy way to remember it so like in the school time we used to make graphs so this side was negative this side was positive so 
if your waveform looks like this if there is space here just plus here just increase the frequency and for the other side like I mentioned before if it's uh, sp there is some space here or it's flat out here just uh, decrease the frequency like I just uh, mentioned now if there is some space here then you're probably using a really high value for your shunt capacitors so start small and uh, make sure your waveform looks smooth and increase it in a small uh, intervals so you have to watch your power supply just uh, look at the current draw currently it's at uh, 600 milliamps so if I increase uh, decrease it a little bit now it just went up to 700 milliamps means it looks zero voltage switching here but it's drawing more current with uh, that means it's not really zero voltage switching so increase 600 milliamps before we move on to actual testing I want to mention another thing is that when you put your work material in your coil uh, focus it's gonna shift your signal so like here so try to use a little lower frequency so that when you put your material inside the coil it's gonna be zero voltage switching so I just showed you the effect of iron nails on the waveform those were magnetic so now I'm gonna show you the effect of aluminum foil this is non-magnetic I'm gonna turn on the power supply it shifts the waveform the other way so try to be very careful when you are building your circuit for the first time so that you don't burn your IGBT or MOSFET So we will be testing uh, aluminium first. I just added a bit of water to the foil so you will be able to hear something or see some vapors. Alright, I'm going to turn it on now. The current draw is at uh, six and a half amps at 27 volts. And I increase the voltage to 30 volts. So seven amps. So this is just water vapor. And just for show. Still the amperage is at uh, 7 amps, so 7 amps and uh, 300 milliamps or 7.3 amps. It's pretty stable. The waveform is still stable. It's at uh, 34 kilohertz. So the current draw is now 7.4 amps, 7.5, 7.6. Eight amps, six 
7.6 amps. Oh, something getting hot down there. So I'll put it back. Seven point seven apps. Increase the frequency a bit. Seven point two apps. And it's starting to smell a bit. Oh, as you can see, I think it's melting over here. It's ripped apart a bit before. Not sure. Mm. It's red hot in the middle. Something is happening. The current rise at uh, six point nine amps. I just uh, burned my lids wire a bit so that's why they use copper pipes I guess to make the induction heater <laughs> 